record from my side and let me share the screen okay wait can you see my screen right okay so let me start the machine so what we have discussed in the last class Okay. How many ways to connect default instance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyone completed that assignment? Yes, sir. So what are the other ways we have to connect to the default instance? Sir, one is port number, another one is IP address. Okay. And named pipes. Named pipes. Okay. SQL then SQL login. SQL login. Oh, that is not correct. Okay, so I am asking the other ways to connect to the default instance. SQL login, Windows login, that is different thing. Okay, what are the other names we can give to connect to the instance? Open SSH command. Sorry. Open SSH command. Connect okay. to the SQL server. Okay. Then their uh, server name. Okay. Uh, there uh, we can choose uh, uh, browse for more options. Okay. There uh, we can find expand the database engine. Mm -hmm. Select the name. Okay. Select the name of. Uh, See that you can also record. Right, okay. So anyone tried, anyone Googled it? Host name, command name. Host name. You can find computer name using a host name. That's not the one. Okay, so someone answered to this question okay you can give name and price we can give port number also so like that there is there are some more ways or names to connect to the default instance okay so please find it again you can you can get it in the microsoft website how to connect to the default instance for sql server or how many ways we can connect to the default instance of sql server just search in that search with that keyword so that you can get the results okay fine Right, so in the last class, we have discussed about the SQL Server installation. And then yesterday, we just installed SSMS Management Studio. Okay, so right. So now let's connect to the instance. Yesterday, also we discussed how to connect to the instance, how many ways you can connect to the instance. Okay, so can anyone tell me what are the ways to connect to the default instance? Using DAC, also we can connect. Using DAC, local. that is a different thing. Okay, yeah. Local voice. In, in word, we can use in. Your voice is breaking. Word. Sorry, we can use in our word, one word. Mm -hmm. In our word, what is that? Yes, using in. In, I'm not in, getting you. Yes. Your voice is breaking. Actually, I am using a Bluetooth speaker, so my speakers are done. Okay, okay, that's fine. So, it's my speakers are done. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, so we can either use computer name or dot or local or local host to connect to the default instance. Okay, fine. So today we'll discuss about how to create a databases. Okay, so once we have we discussed how to create database, is it completed? No, I think. Oh, okay, that's okay. fine. Okay, so we'll discuss okay. how. To, yeah, yeah, we'll discuss how to create a database today. Then we'll start discussing about the system databases. How many system databases are there? What are the uses of those system databases? And I will discuss. Right. So 
earlier we discussed database is a collection of two files one is data file second one is log file okay so without creating data file and without creating the log file we cannot create the database okay so that's why we have to create even though if we are creating a database okay so even though if you are creating the database automatically two files will be created for every database this is common even for system databases also we will have two files one is data file second one is log file one will data one will save the data permanently which is data file okay one will save the data permanently which is data file and one will save the data okay temporarily which is log file data file will save the data permanently okay and log file will save the data temporarily okay so that is the use of these two files one which is data file will save the data permanently and another one is log file which will save the data temporarily until the data goes to data file the data will be saved okay the transactions actually in the log files transactions will be saved okay the transactions will be saved in the log file until the data goes to the data file once the data goes to the data file whatever transactions are there in the log file will be truncated truncated means what deleted okay so log file you cannot store the data permanently it will act as a log book okay if you go to any library usually we can see log books if you go to any apartment or if you go to any new place we can see log book okay entry book so they will they will ask your name at what time you came to whom you are going to meet in case if you are going for an apartment visit and all okay and if you go to the library at what time you came what is your name what is your library membership how many books you took okay so in case if you have any balance on your name okay we have to mention the log book and all so in the same way the log file for the database also will work it is going to record each and every transaction and information about the complete transaction details about the complete transaction until the data goes to the data file the log file will hold the transactions once the data is permanently written to the data file then the same transaction will be deleted from the log file okay why because we don't know so next minute what will happen we don't know okay something may power crash may came or else some natural calamities like tsunami okay earthquake these kind of issues may came or else simply data miss may went into offline or corrupted so if there is no guarantee for our data while inserting data imagine you, you are inserting 100 1 lakh records imagine you are inserting 1 lakh records after entering 99000 records okay there are still 1000 records are pending suddenly someone rebooted the sql server or someone rebooted the windows machine what will happen to my 1 lakh records right because if 1 lakh records are completed then all the records will be committed at a time so that once the data is completed it will go to the data file so even if someone restarted the sql server or windows machine happily your data will be saved permanently to the disk okay but the, if the data is in log file there is no guarantee to the data okay so to achieve a redo undo or roll back roll forward scenario so in this case what will happen you know once the server is back again sql server will undo all the 99000 transactions and again it is going to redo all the 1 lakh transactions again based on the based on the committed and uncommitted transaction scenario okay so for every transaction we have committed and uncommitted okay committed means it will permanently return to the disk so nothing will happen even though the server is rebooted the data which is stored in the disk will be there permanently okay so till the data is going to be committed the transactions will hold the data in the log file once it is committed in the data file once the data is permanently saved in the data file 
then there is no use of the transaction. So it will be deleted from the log file. So that's why log file, if you see log file, it will vary, okay? One day you can see 100 GB, one day you can see one GB, one day you can see 200 GB, one day you can see 20 GB. Why? Because it don't hold the data permanently. One day sudden growth will be there. If a lot of transactions are coming into the database, one day it will be increased to, okay, two TB, two terabytes. The max log file size is two TB only. It cannot increase more than two TB data file as per your, okay, uh, disk as per your disk space, it can hold how much data you want, but log file cannot hold more data. The max capacity is only, how much? Two TB. Yes, two TB, okay. It cannot grow more than two TB. Log file cannot grow more than two TB. And the main purpose of the log file is, it is going to save the or store the data or transactions temporarily. Once the data is moved to the data file permanently, the transactions from the log file will be truncated. That is the use of the log file. Okay, mainly during the crash situations to redo and undo, we are going to use data file and sorry, log file. Okay, once the transaction is committed, committed means simply saved. As of now, committed means simply saved. See, for example, you're typing something in the notepad or Word document. You're typing 10 pages you typed, okay? But you forgot to save the data. Suddenly, laptop was restarted. Are you going to get your data? No, right? No, so that's it. Your work is gone, okay? So again, you, can, you have to type those 10 pages, right? In the same way, the log file also will behave. Okay, so but there is a beautiful feature with the log file, a redo undo purpose. So in case if something happened to the database while inserting the data, while updating or while deleting the data, while running the transactions, there is an offer option called a redo and undo. Automatically, it will only do redo and undo in case, okay, if something went wrong, it will undo all the changes. Undo means what? Cancel the changes. And again, it will redo means again, it is going to, again, it is going to write the data to the data file okay so always data first will go to the transactions you, you cannot say data so in the log file we are going to save transactions so what is transactions for example insert into employee values okay one comma something like hurry something fifty thousand. okay the whole this one is there right the whole line is called a transaction Okay, the whole line. This is a complete transaction. Transactions will be saved like that insert query. This is insert query, update query, delete query. So these are the transactions. This part is there, right? One hurry, five, 50,000. What is this? What is this? Values. Data. Data. Okay. Data will be stored in the data file. So in the data file, only these values will be stored, okay? But in the log file, the whole transactions will be stored. Why? Because if something happened, if it has to redo the transaction, the complete transaction should be there, right? Redo means again, it is going to rerun the transaction, okay? So log file not only stores the transaction, it, it stores the timestamp, date stamp, who run this query, on what database they run, on what table they run this query, so in case if something happened, it is going to, again, it is going to rerun the same transaction on the same database, same table. Okay, so that's why log file not only stores the transaction information, it will stores 108 attributes of each transaction. 108 attributes means what? 108 properties of each transaction. Means, okay, log sequence number, every log, Okay, every transaction will have LSN number. LSN means log sequence number, like a roll number kind of thing. Okay, how a student will have a roll number, how, how an employee will have an uh, employee number. In the same way, each transaction will have a log sequence number. Like we have products, right, while delivering, we will have that order ID, right? Each product will have order ID, right? In the same way, to track the transaction, every transaction will have LSN number. So in the log file, the transactions will be stored, 
the details of the transactions like on what database on what table at what time who run this query all this information like this 108 properties of the transaction will be stored in the log file okay but when the transaction is committed okay only this part will goes to the data file once the transaction is committed only this part will goes to the data file once this data is permanently moved to the data file the whole information about these transactions will be truncated from the log file so log file will be recycled every time the log file will be recycled okay so every time the log file will be recycled you cannot store the data permanently in the log file clear guys is it clear yeah so every database yeah yeah any questions right okay so every day yeah uh, every database will have two files minimum two files okay every database will have minimum two files one is data file second one is log file data file will help you to store the data permanently whereas log file will help you to store the data temporarily once the transactions okay moved from log file to data file or once the data is moved from log file to data file whatever transactions are there in the log file will be truncated automatically okay right so if you see here once you install sql server these are the objects we have okay everything we can call it is object only databases okay security server objects replication polybase always on management integration catalog sql server agent x event profiler these are all different different objects in the sql server okay so you can see this plus plus and minus if you just click on this plus and minus you can see other objects are hide okay so you can see here just click on plus symbol and you can see this is the object explorer object explorer so it will help you to show the connected instances or to connect to an instance we will have controls here okay this is the connect button in case you want to connect to any instance you can give the computer name sorry you can give the instance name and you can connect to the instance okay object explorer will help you for two things one is it will show you the connected instances and the second thing is it will help you to connect to the new instances okay connect or disconnect this is the disconnect button in case you want to disconnect you can disconnect like this okay nothing will happen see if you have work you are going to connect it if your work is completed you can disconnect it but the server will be up and running in the back end you cannot stop the sql server you can connect and disconnect the sql servers okay so this is the connect button and this is the disconnect button right just a minute guys just a minute Right, okay. Fine. Uh, yeah. So, right. So, you can see here this is the connect button, and just click on this connect button, and you can connect to the instance. Okay. In case you want to connect to the different instance, again, you can click on this connect button, or else you can use this also connect. Okay. It will ask you to what component I have to connect. Okay. Database engine and you can give the computer name or else instance name also here okay right so if you expand here under databases we cannot see any databases right if you expand system databases by default we will get these four system databases okay so when you install sql server automatically we'll get these four system databases i will explain what is the use of these system databases okay so before that let me create one database manually how to create a database we have to know it's a dba activity only okay so we can create database in two ways very simple not a big deal we can create database in two ways one is gui option second one is query method remember guys for every action you can use query to complete but for every action 
there may be GUA option, there may not be GUA option. Means every work you can complete with the help of query, but every work you cannot complete with the help of GUI, graphical user interface. Okay, graphical user interface means like that. Once you right click on it, you will get a lot of options. You can create it, right? So as discussed, SQL Server or Windows Server don't know the graphical user interface. The GUI or UI user interface will simply help you to create a query. Okay, so remember for everything we can do in two ways. One is GUI option, GUI way. Second one is query method. So let's discuss how to create a database using GUI. Okay, so right click on this databases, select a new database. Okay, so you'll get this kind of window, new window, I mean, new database window, you can see here, it is asking the name of the database. Of course, you have to provide the name of the database, right? Let's start with the batch 39, batch 39. Okay, so this is my database name. Usually in the organization, you cannot give the database names by your own. You cannot decide the database names. Application team will tell you what would be the name of the database. Based on that, you can proceed, you can simply create, you have to simply type the name of the database here under the database name. Okay, so that's it. You can create and you can click okay, automatically database will be created. That's it, nothing is there. Right click new database and give the name of the database and click okay, automatically new database will be created. Okay, so if you see here, we have to explore the things, right? So if you see here, owner, it is showing default. If I click okay, who will be the owner of this database? Can anyone tell me? I am not going to change the owner. If I click OK now, it is showing default, right? Once if I click OK, who will be the owner of this database? System. Sorry. System OK, so who, uh, no. So here, if you see, yeah, if you see here, who is connected to the SQL server? With which login you have connected to the server? Administrator. Administrator. Yes, Windows administrator, very good, okay. So as you are doing multiple things with the help of this name, as you're creating new objects while connecting with this name, okay, so, now the database owner will be the Windows administrator. How you are connected, with what login you have connected. So whatever objects you are creating, all the objects, either databases or jobs, all the objects owners will be the login name. If you don't change it, if you don't change it by default, okay, this will this login will act as a db owner database owner if you want to change it you can change it we can happily change this one okay usually those who are creating the database actually in this scenario who is creating administrator we, we just connected to the server as administrator right so administrator is creating the database so if we don't change it even though it is showing default default means who is creating the database his name will act as a owner in our case, administrator is creating the database. So here, Windows administrator name will come as a database owner. If you have a specific login, if you have a Kumar Swami Yadav login, you just connected to the server using Kumar Swami Yadav. Okay, now you just created the database. Now, who will be the owner of the database? Administrator. You just logged in as a Kumar Swami. You created a database. Who will be the database owner? Kumar Swami. Kumar Swami. Kumar Swami. Kumar Swami. That's it. Who is connected? Okay. He will become the owner of the database while creating. Don't think every time. If Kumar Swami Yadav is creating new database, Kumar Swami Yadav became owner of this database. If Kumar Swami Yadav is creating new job, Kumar Swami Yadav will become owner of the job. Who is creating the objects? Okay, automatically owner name will be reflected by his name. Okay, 
right so i can change it usually we cannot keep individual logins as a username why because kumar swami yado got a good opportunity in another company he is going to jump to the next company his account will be deleted from the current company then this database won't work properly okay there is a permanent login in the sql server that is called sa yes ye can't be deleted if you want to see the login you can go and you can check under the security you can go to the logins there you can see yes ye login yes ye can't be deleted it's a permanent login so that's why for every object usually yes ye will be the owner okay for every objects usually yes ye will be the owner we don't keep it as default default means those who are creating the objects he will be act as a owner so we have to change it to sa okay so why because in case in the future kumar swami go to the another company his account will be deleted right so if you change from kumar swami to sa then nothing will be there no issues will be there happily the database will be up and running okay clear so that is the importance of the owner in yeah yeah in real in the organization also we need to change the owner has yes SA yes 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 of course of course okay we are discussing the organization strategies only okay right yeah the meeting is going to end just we'll wait for 30 seconds okay so here if you see i told you right so whenever you are creating a database two files will be created this is your data file and this is your log file you can see the name here underscore log database name underscore log and you can see just expand this file type okay one is rows data means data type second one is log log, log file we have five file groups okay the meeting is going to end now let me reopen the meeting okay please join immediately with the same link